Computers have been with us for a while now and has since been one of the most important since it was invented. From a necessity that helped the U.S. government for the census, to an expensive luxury to have as an individual, to a necessity nowadays, computers came a long way and is still improving as time goes by. As computer science students, we've used these computers on a lot of things, including, but not limited to, programming with it. But we've yet to understand the concept behind its name, compute, or computing in general. Why such devices named elaborately, and how does this device does what it's built for? That is one of our topics for today, and the main topic that we'll be discussing for now is Introduction to Automata Theory. This will teach us about the concept of automata and how does it relate to the computers that we use nowadays. So, before anything else, let's discuss what is the theory of computation. So this is known to be the most fundamental course of computer science and is considered the most abstract of them all. So why is it abstract? Because this won't teach the students how to write programs or build a computer, but rather how the people have taught computer science as a science in the past up to now. So this subject is about three of the following things. What kind of things can you really compute mechanically? So that are the objects that are computable mechanically. How fast can you do it? That is the speed of computation. And how much space does it take to do so? That is the space required for computation. So the second and third one, speed of computation and space required for computation are already discussed in digital logic design and the other subjects that we had before. But we're going to discuss objects that are computable mechanically. We're going to focus on the first one. So let's go ahead and ask some examples for this. One of the first examples that we can have is a program that can only accept a binary string that ends in one. Can we create a program that can only accept binary strings that ends in one? The answer is yes. And here is the flowchart that we can use for this one. All we have to do is have a program that will accept an input, then that input will be processed by our program and ask whether the string ends in 1 or not. If it ends in 1, the program accepts the input, and if it's not, the program will reject the input. Then the program will end. Simple. So this problem is computable mechanically. Next, let's have another example. Can we create a program that can only accept valid C-sharp codes? Is it possible for a computer to accept valid C-sharp codes? And the answer is yes. Those are what we call compilers and interpreters in general. A program that can only accept valid C-sharp codes are computable. Now, how about a program that can only accept valid C-sharp codes and never goes into infinite loop? So we already determined that the first one, a program that can only accept valid C-sharp codes, are possible in a computer. So we can create a program that can do this. But the second one never goes into infinite loop. Is it possible for a computer to have this one? And the answer is no. Why is that? Because the rule of theory of computation suggests that every rule can only be within a finite space. That means possible parts for the computer are only in a finite manner. So when we count, it's only from zero to a million numbers, but it can never go into infinite. So we can have a program like this. So a Boolean that will say that the Boolean is true, then while that Boolean is true, it will go into infinite loop. Although we can write a checker for the loop like this one so I'm not going to give any examples but like this one the computer will never go into that line because what will happen is the computer will test the loop by running it so let's say for example the computer saw that this part is true or this part is correct so it already accepted the valid C sharp code which is this part then it will go to the next line which is while a or while a is true so while this is happening the computer will go into a loop so that means it will be an infinite output while the computer does that it will never go into the next line which is the infinite loop checker because it is stuck in the infinite loop 
so we won't be able to have any checker at all. What will happen is it will go into infinite loop and the only way to break it is to turn off the computer or turn off the IDE or the machine. Again, the theory of computation only suggests that every rule can only be within the finite space. And if it's not within the finite space, it will be impossible for the computer. We'll be discussing this further as we go along, especially on our final part of the lecture. But for now, just remember that everything inside the theory of computation must only be in a finite space. So the theory of computation is all about designing a machine that has these three. So the machine must accept an input from the user. The machine must think about the input based on the rules given. So we're only going to base our process on the rules that we gave on our machine. And of course, we'll either say yes or no. So if the machine accepts an input, it will process it or think about the input and it will ask whether it is a yes or a no. Basically, we're talking about a computer, whether the, uh, the user will input something, then process it, then it will accept it or not. So that is the basis of theory of computation and that will be our basis for the subject that we're going to tackle, which is automata theory. So we're going to talk about what is automata. So according to Wikipedia, automata is a theory in theoretical computer science that is a study of abstract machines and automata, as well as computational problems that can be solved using them. As mentioned right here, automata is a part of theoretical computer science. And we're going to talk about abstract machines and automata in general. I'll be giving an example on what is an automata. But of course, we're going to talk about computational problems as well. So let's go for the first part. What is theoretical computer science? So theoretical computer science is the subject in general computer science that focuses on its mathematical aspects. So we're not going to talk about codes. We're not going to talk about any design preferences or whatnot, or logic rather, but we're going to talk about mathematical aspects. What are the formula, the equations, the functions inside our computer that does things for us? So that is theoretical computer science. So the word automata comes from a Greek word, automata, and that means self-acting or self-making. So that means it is typically a machine that has a set of rules in it and then when it runs it does what it says to do or ask to do so just like an example right here we have a of course this is a toy but this is one of the best examples of automata wherein we have our dragon flying while the spindle is being spun so how is that related to the computers that we know today so an automaton or automata in plural, is an abstract self-propelled computing device which follows a predetermined sequence of operations automatically. So whenever the computer or the machine runs, it will follow the rules that we give it. So right here on the machine that we're looking at, the rules that we're giving it are based on the gears that we gave it. So just like this on below the machine. So these gears acts as our instructions on how the machine will act on our command. So as the machine is working, it follows a certain type of instructions that we have given it. So the instructions right here will be based on the gears like this one, and then it will act upon it whenever that gear uh, takes it. So just like on the dragon that we're looking right here, so it will flap its wings and then wag its tail and head as our machine is being spun. That is what we want on our computer programs as well. We want our programs to run whenever we want it or however we want it. We want it to do the predetermined sequence that we want it to do. So while we're talking about automata, we're going to discuss its classes or its layers. So there are six layers of automata that we're going to discuss and each layer is improving from the first one. So the first one will be the lowest part of automata and then the last part will be the most complex one. So it represents classes or complexity. 
The first one is actually the combinational logic circuit or combinational logic. We already discussed this on our lecture on digital logic design and these are memoryless digital logic circuits whose output at any instant depends on the combination of its input. So it will only work when you push one, it will try to output whatever it is that it must output. So the term combination came from mathematics, combination as well, which is an unordered set where the order of selection does not matter. So if there are four buttons and you have to press at least two of them, it doesn't matter if you push two or three, or three or two. The machine will accept both of them. Or if the machine has to accept six buttons, it doesn't matter if it's one, two, three, four, five, six, or six, five, four, three, two, one. As long as you push the six buttons, that is called the combination. We already discussed this, so we're not going to discuss this one on our lecture. But we're going to start with finite state machine. So whenever you hear automata, finite state machine is the one being thought. So this is the simplest model of computation, which has a limited amount of memory and can perform low-level computation. The best example for this is the turnstile machine in MRT. When you swipe your card or when you put in your card, the machine will allow you to turn it in order for you to pass. So that is called the turnstile machine and we're going to discuss that later on in our subjects. But again, this is the simplest model of computation in automata. The improvement on finite state machine is called the context-free languages. So when we're talking about languages, we're not talking about programming languages in general because when we say language, it means Java or C Sharp or whatnot. In here, language means a set of strings. And that is what we're going to discuss. So one of those set of strings is context-free languages. So this is more capable than finite state machine and it is actually used by its uh, itinerary which is pushed down automata. So we're going to discuss context-free languages, how it is built, how we can use it, so on and so forth. And now we're going to discuss push down automata. So this is an improvement of finite state machine and context-free languages. So this is a type of automata that employs a stack. So if you already discussed before data structures, we already discussed stack in there. So we're going to discuss it further later on when we're discussing pushdown automata. This is more powerful than finite state machine and can recognize context-free languages. But it is not as powerful as the next one, which is the Turing machine. So this is actually designed by Alan Turing. So this is a higher level computation than pushdown automata, context-free languages, and finite state machines in general. And this theory is actually the basis on why we have our CPUs or central processing units right now on our computers. And right after Turing machine, we have undecidable. We call it undecidable because these means incomputable or we cannot solve this by using our machines or these problems cannot be solved mechanically. They are the most complex ones. They are the theories that is non-existent on our computers right now. So we're going to discuss uh, universal Turing machines and again the incomputable functions for this one. And that concludes our lecture for today. If you have questions, kindly leave a comment on our Google Classroom later on and I'll try to answer them for you. Or you can PM me on my socials right here. You can try to contact me on Facebook. That is Sean.gono09. And on my email, sir.sean.dit.cbsu at gmail.com. So that is it for today. Thank you so much for watching this video and hope you like it.